Okay, so we are back here in Detroit for Rapid TCT, and I'm here with Pantheon, which is funnily enough, three years ago when I did my very first interview at my very first event that I covered as a 3D printing content creator. Wait, that was us? That was you guys. I didn't know that. That was the very first event oh, I went dude, to back in 2022. Hilarious. So okay. we're back here in Detroit, and they have something even better. So the first time they had the HS3, it was yeah. new, it was in a prototype. I have one of those machines now, it's a pretty cool machine but it could be better. It could be an HS Pro, which is what they have there now. So Bob, what's the HS Pro? Okay, so the long and short of it, I really want to be able to 3D print motorcycles. So this so is fully just, 3D printed. It's a fully 3D printed mini bike. So we, I just built the machine that I wanted to do this project with. And that's, that's really the end of it. So <laughs> I think what that ended up being was it had to be bigger so we could fit like, you know, fork chunks and frame sections in full pieces. So it's a bigger build volume. It's 400 millimeters by 400. Um, parts needed to be stronger. So we got the deposition density way higher by improving motion and deposition accuracy. So like, I think we're getting like 60-ish MPA on Z bonds in nylon, which is pretty absurd. And like 120 on the XY, which was, you know, enough to make a part that would have been cast aluminum before. Yeah, because you, you've taken this thing off ramps. Yeah, yeah. And this is fully 3D printed. There's not like there's an aluminum extrusion frame no, in no, it or anything. No, no, there's, like, it's just printed. Um, and then the last one was it had to be faster, because, like, this is a lot of parts. And, like, one machine can print all of this in about seven, eight days. Um, it's like the new machines, the HS Pros, they're printing about two kilos a day. So we have the machine over here. So let's let's snoop over here and take a look at it so you can talk about it. Because back there, that's an HS3 back there. Yeah. So we've seen that one. So what is the big differences between the three and the now the HS Pro? Because it's, it's not that much bigger footprint wise. Yeah just comparing it to the one back there, but... It's about an inch bigger. Yeah, because it's it's 400 by 400 by like 300, 300 versus 300 by 300 by 300. Okay, so we have a much bigger XY. And what else is new on it? Um, I think, like, this is more or less a ground-up redesign. Like, we took everything that we liked about the HS3, we took everything we learned about 3D printing in the last few years, and we kind of just blank slated this starting in September, October. And... Like, okay, let's just go top down. Okay, so I think I brought up earlier, the goal was like, print a motorcycle, stronger, faster, and bigger. Man, I am tired right now. <laughs> so starting at the top, print head, we needed better deposition accuracy. So we ended up, like, dude, we have to bin drive gears from Bond Tech because we're specking them to within like five microns of diameter range. Oh, wow. Like, okay, look at the print, look at how dense the layers are. Like, there is no gaps in the outer walls. You need crazy deposition accuracy to be able to get that. And that's where, like, the really good bond strength comes from. Because, like, the only ways you make bond strength better is more heat or more pressure. More pressure is more dense. But if you go, if you, like, if you go a little bit too much or it's not perfect, you get all these over extrusion errors that look terrible. Yeah. And, like, you can see the side walls are pretty much perfect. Yeah, that is. Now, to be fair, it is a carbon fiber fiber filament, which is kind of known for making everything look good. Okay, but that's what this looks good. This looks good. It's good, good. Printhead's all about deficit and accuracy. We've got a lot of low-level feedback from our TMC drivers now. So we're using the TMC driver low-level feedback to measure extrusion force. Well, like, we built a model to infer it. So okay. we know how hard we're pushing. We're looking at our load cell a lot more in real time now. So we've built a bit more of a closed-loop model Right now, it's not really doing that much other than like giving you a scoring value on how good the deposition is instantaneously. Um, and that is a custom tool head, right? That yeah, is a custom yeah. hot end and everything. There is nothing off the shelf. It sucks. I love being able to buy stuff and now we can't. It, it still uses V6 nozzles though, right? Yeah, V6, there's nothing wrong okay. with it. Okay, yeah. so it's still V6 nozzles, but everything else is custom. Now, yeah. are we still using the clear pass servos? Yeah. Oh man, okay, so Alex built this giant Python AI doohickey, I don't know what to call it. And he like <laughs> fed in essentially every motion system component available and with like motors from a ton of manufacturers, all the different sizes and like pitch variables of ball screws. And then about a hundred G-code files. Oh yeah. And like he built an algorithm that determined mathematically <laughs> the best setup and we ended up back with clear paths. Okay. But 250,000K excels. 
250,000. No, like 250,000. That's fast. You're, you're easily able to outrun the hot end on this machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's not the point. It's like really fast travels also help maintain consistent yeah. nozzle like pressure, which also improves deposition accuracy. Yeah, because if the machine's not laying down plastic, it's it's not it's yeah, wasting time. Ideally, you might as well move fast. Ideally, the nozzle is at constant pressure all the time. Um, and then coming down, we made a lot of improvements on the build tray. So previously, it was you know two motors, like. The bed level was set through manual calibration. It was It's stable, like it's factory set and you have to check it once a year. And it's actually once a year. Yeah. But now we have like three point independent Z. Um, and you're still using the common plate base design as it's well. It's just, it's so good for alignment. Like I think these swing arm parts, we took them to a, like a, a measuring machine thingy. Yeah, and I think CMM. we were within like a CMM and like the bore tolerance from like, the bearing pivot for the um, swing arm bearings to the axle was within like seven or eight thou. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah. Like it's machining tolerance. Yeah. Yeah. And then we still have all these awesome machine parts here. And right now you said these are, we, these were done in-house for these ones. Yeah, I think these, we finally got a big boy CNC. We finally got a Haas with a big 30 tool tool changer. So we're starting to run a lot more things just fully in-house. And then, it's kind of surprising because we have all this nice machined aluminum. It's aluminum, right? Yeah. But then carbon fiber. Oh man, okay. So we really wanted to optimize this for high stiffness and high acceleration. Yeah. And Alex ended up once again running a ton of computer simulation. And this was the optimal design. I think I need to grab him for the actual numbers, but I think it's somewhere as like, it's like five or six times stiffer in the vertical direction. And three, I think double the stiffness torsionally compared to a same weight aluminum spar. Oh, wow. So just adding that, that carbon fiber spar on the back there. It's a shocking difference. Oh, nice. it's not just like random carbon fiber. I like it's Torre something. It's proper uh, carbon yeah. fiber. It's proper carbon fiber. So like we get the best of both worlds. You get the stiffness, but like terrible accuracy with trying to do carbon stuff. And then we have the aluminum for locating everything accurately. Nice. Since we are just looking kind of at the back here, I'm not seeing the electronics is gone from the back. We don't have the 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 vent is now integrated. It looks like. No, it's not. And where the where did you move the electronics? Yeah, so to? it's it's all in the base plate now. It's, it's all there. The, it's all there, and you're still using the Manta and breakout yep. boards for the clear press because if it There's works, it works. Wrong with it. Yeah, if it like, works, it works, and you know we it works. have like we've gone to a completely custom printhead board because we're like interfacing with new types of sensors. We have a bunch of analog front end processing, and there's just like the Manta is fine. So yeah, so that's some of the the big points about the HS Pro. It's basically everything you've learned from the HS3. Yeah and then refined and re-optimized for a final new product that, you know, visually similar, but basically completely new no, from we, the ground up. We, we made it black, just it was really obvious that it was different. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we don't have the shiny aluminum on the yeah, outside. We're here. like, what's the opposite of shiny metal? Black powder coat. I'm just surprised you managed to get that much more print volume out of the machine by making it only like 25 millimeters wider. Yeah, like, you it, could it's also- It's a lot more optimized. Yeah. I. I you could say that's surprising, or you could say that we were kind of sloppy the first time. <laughs> it's about as much print volume as you can fit into this type of chassis design. Oh. Like, I'm pretty happy with it. Like, it's there's not very much wasted space. Um, like, we kind of use every bit of space that we have here. Like, with that electrical panel gone from the back, we dedicated all of that to air management. Yeah, because this yeah. now has, you now have heaters in here too. Yeah, you know? so we have a thousand watts of convection heating. We also have way more circulation airflow. So these vents blow up. Yep. And the goal is just maintaining as uniform air temperature as possible. Yeah, because you, you're not printing crazy high temp material plastics here, but you're printing plastics that benefit a lot from having a high stable temperature in the chamber. Yes, and stable is really the big thing. Yeah. Um, like within the entire chamber, we've probably put a dozen thermocouples in here 
And we're seeing like temper variations across the chamber of like less than two degrees. Yeah, because like for your customers that are using these machines, it's not so much that it's a fast printer, it's that the parts that come out of the printer are to within a spec and a tolerance Honestly, that meets all their demands. Our customers care that the parts are really good, like they're strong and they're accurate. I just care that they're fast. The, the speed is for me. <laughs> the speed is a byproduct of making a good machine. Yeah, I well like waiting sucks. True. <laughs> Why suck if you don't have to? So that is the Pantheon HS Pro. Can you buy it now? Yeah, uh, almost. almost. We're going to make first deliveries in May. Okay. Go to our website, talk to us, and we can get something going pretty quick. Awesome. Cheers, Bob. Judo. Ah, oh, almost. Oh wow, it's got some acceptance. If you Dude, when you hit that throttle, you can feel it wants to go. Here's the brakes. <laughs> 